Hey. Hey. So. Uh. I know I said I was gonna play the Miskatonic, but I have all these Sakura games, and I think the first few are fairly short, so. If I'm gonna start doing visual novels for the time being until I'm burnt out, I might as well, uh, do one in between main visual novels. So let's start with the first one, Sakura Spirit. Um, I don't do preferences. I don't know what help is, but I don't want it to, like, open up a website, so... Gallery. Yeah, nothing here. Oh, that's four pages. That's more than I thought. I heard this game is, like, not only really short, but also has, like... Like, two choices. Every person has a dream that they wish to pursue. Yet, as people grow up, they often come to realize the truth. The dreams are nothing more than fairy tales. At least that's what most people say. But then, what about those who do end up accomplishing their dreams? Are they merely incredibly lucky? Every man has a dream he wants to accomplish. However, there are some... There is something really important you should know, my boy. Oh, this is my dad, I didn't realize. Okay. Ah, I see. A real man doesn't give up on his dreams no matter what overwhelming challenges he might have to face. I still remember those foolish words my dad used to say, but despite their silly nature, I find myself inspired by them. Ever since I was a young child, I've been interested in martial arts. It didn't matter whether I watched a match on TV or read a manga about some heroic martial artist. It was always been my dream to become a martial artist one day. Of course, it was a bit challenging for me to think that I could become a hero simply by learning martial arts. Even though I already understood that superheroes were nothing more than figments of my imagination, I still had the desire to use my strength for the sake of others. My name is Gushiken Takahiro, a 17-year-old inspired uh, no, inspiring. 17 year old rising judo star. Shouldn't judo be capitalized? And no, that's not me bragging. I'm actually about to take part in a tournament two weeks from now that could make or break my career on an international level. Of course, I was excited about the opportunity to finally accomplish my dreams and represent my country at a sport that I loved. The same excitement also made me feel incredibly nervous. And while those worrisome thoughts haunted my mind, a familiar voice responded from outside the window. Oi! Takakun! Get your button gear! Okay, okay, I'll be right there, Koyomi. Not wanting to keep Koyomi raiding, I, just, I quickly dashed toward the front door to let her in. And I even realized I was still in my uh, PJs. Hold on a second, Koyomi. Gotta grab my shoes before I head off to school. Really? I never realized our school was that sh had a strict uniform or sleepwear policy. Nice jammies, by the way. Did you borrow them from your mom? For a moment, my eyes drifted downwards, noticing that I was indeed wearing my PJs. I let out a groan of annoyance and marched back towards my room. Ugh. There's nothing wrong with my jammies. The Golden Knight is famous comic book hero in the West. Besides, not everyone prefers to sleep naked like you. Mumbling those words, I started stripping out my clothes, not particularly minding the presence of a girl behind me. Ooh, hey, yo. That only happened once. You know very well it was super hot that night. And jeez, woman before you stripped naked in front of me, you baka. You didn't seem to mind that when we were little. Maybe you want me to turn around instead. No, stop. Don't make me kick your ass. I decided I had I decided I had to tease her enough and quickly put my pants on. Proceeding with the remaining few items of clothing before I was suitably dressed for school. Besides, I had a reason for being so distracted. You've been distracted a lot lately. What's going on in that hall school of yours? It's that upcoming match. I have no idea how anyone can remain calm with an international career at its stakes. It wouldn't be surprised if I had made up enough doomsday scenarios to fill up the apocalypse genre. Alright, the judo thing. I'm sure you'll do fine. I've seen some of your matches and you kick butt. And of course, if you're really worried, you could always pray. Pray? What? Don't tell me you don't know. It's one of the school's legends. Apparently, there's some shrine out here in the forest that if you pray to, it'll bring you good luck. Jakarta-san said his sister prayed to it the night before her exam, and she got a perfect score. A shrine that is said to 
bring you good luck. Sounds like bogus to me, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything, I guess. I'll ask Ichikawa-san about the location. I'm not exactly in the mood to get lost in the forest and end up a modern-day Tarzan. Well, whatever. If you do go looking, at least send me a message to let me know. You And will you hurry up? We're gonna be late again. Heroes nibble too early, nor are they too late. They arrive precisely when they are needed. For the sake of avoiding detention, let's hurry. That's a wizard, not a hero. Genius. How can one person be such a sports nerd and such a geek at the same time? Let's not forget the Casanova and Man of the Year candidate bits. Your, their important details. I doubt you qualify for either of those, Pajama Boy. Anyways, let's us boldly go where everyone has gone before. To school! Ugh, nerd. Several hours later. Later that day, I finally got a chance to talk to my classmates about the location of the shrine that Koyomi had mentioned earlier. Jen was the last thing on the schedule for today, so once people got ready to go home, I approached the guy. Hey Jikawa, is it true that your sister discovered some shrine that's said to bring you good luck? Oh, is that Ichikawa? Look at this dork. Oh ho ho, let me guess. You want to date her? I asked about the shrine, not your sister. I mean, I guess your sister was involved, but I asked about the shrine. Well, even though I do have to admit that she's very attractive, I have to admit that my sister is very attractive. I'm afraid she's already going out with someone. Who? My dad. Incest runs deep in the fan. Ah, ah, jeez. I already got my hands full of dealing with Kayumi. You can keep your sister to yourself. Jokes aside, I'm more interested in the shrine. Did she mention where she found it? I didn't know there was anything near the forest aside from the dojo. Ah, well, uh, he said something about it being near the river, quite high up. To be honest, I wasn't paying much attention when she was going on about it. I mean, she was wearing this top, and it was tight, and man, okay, I made the joke, but like, fuck me. Stop, stop, I seriously don't need to hear details, and I doubt anyone else is interested. I mean, I'm interested. I'm just curious why you're so into your sister. I mean, it's fine. I just I just want to know more. So do you know anyone that might have heard about the shrine? Are you guys talking about that lucky shrine out in the forest? The, the one and only. We're going to Ichikawa's sister. There's supposed to be one near the river. I don't know about that, but there's this fiery girl at the Asakura Dojo who knows more about it. Wait, are you talking about Arya-sama? About this tall, ridiculously strong, and ridiculously strong and super scary. That's the one. Oh, in that case, I believe I can still be of help, Takahiro Kun. I know where that place is. Of course you do. We both do. You just want to tag along, don't you? I don't think Arya Senpai will appreciate you visiting her with your usual tricks in mind. Do I need to remind you what happened the last time you tried to peek at her after she finished practice? Blood, sweat, and tears. Sh sh shut up! I don't peep on the ladies. That's slander, you know. I, sh I should sh sue you. I would never look upon Arya-sama's glorious body in a state of nudity. Also, oh, you haven't seen her naked yet. I I've seen a bit of side boob, but the whole life found didn't really let me get a good view of. There we go. Someone call the cops. Ichikawa, the peeping Tom has confessed. I playfully pat Ichikawa's shoulders as so I turn around. Grabbing my bag in the process and preparing to leave. Thanks for the tip, Ichikawa. I'll let the judge know you were most helpful during the interrogation. This is unfair. I was coerced. I won't say another word until I speak with my lawyer. I don't need you to. Sounds like I got what I wanted. When school was over, I decided to take my chance with the little bit of intel I had managed to attain. For my classmates, memory serves right. Arya-sama will be practicing at the dojo today. Of course, I knew her. She was a judo student, just like myself. But for whatever reason, she was refusing to compete in any tournaments for a while. Arya-senpai, are you around? I shouted her name as I parked my bike, uh, looking around for any signs of the girl. 
Hi, 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 Feeling a hand on her shoulder, Aria reacted. She grabbed hold of my hand and with a loud grunt, shifted her weight, curling and tipping me over her shoulder. I didn't have time to brace myself for the impact before I hit the ground like a stack of potatoes. Oh! No one sneaks up on the great Kunoichi, Aria. Oh, Taka boy. I didn't realize it was you. I'm sorry, are you okay? Are you okay? I was expecting someone taller, wider. With bigger boobs and longer hair, not this child, this cute karate child. Judo, I'm sorry. Kunoichi. Kunoichi, more like Tasmanian Devil. That throw didn't have a shred of mercy in it. There's no mercy in the ring, Taka boy. Better that you learn that now than in two weeks' time. Let me guess, you want to do some sparring, don't you? I actually came here to ask you something, but I guess a little sparring won't hurt. Oh. What did you want to ask? If you got all afternoon, I could do it a bit of break anyways. Not a start. You used to take part in a big and important matches in the past, right? Didn't you ever get nervous before going into the ring? Oh yeah. This one time I got so nervous I hid in the kitchen cupboards until my dad found me and dragged me to the car. Of course, that was when I was like eight. I'm nine now, so I'm a big girl. Well, obviously I can't go hide from my match. One of my friends made the stupid suggestion that I go pray or something. Honestly, at this point, I'll do anything to calm my nerves a little. Daka boy, are you sure about this? You mean the match? Of course I am. I've been practicing judo ever since I was old enough to walk. This is my chance to finally represent this country in the sport I love. Mmm. Aria seems to think for quite a long time, all the while tapping her jaw with her finger. Eventually, she snapped her fingers and grabbed a tight hold of me. All right, I'll tell you the way to the shrine. I know. But it's gonna require more than a simple clap of your hands and a bob of your head. You need to get something to the sign, something of value. I guess I have to think of something before we get there. Thanks, Senpai. I appreciate the help. We? Oh ho ho, Taka boy. I'm not going with you. I've got training to do. Besides, you gotta take this step yourself. I can draw you a map and show you an easy way to get back here, but you'll be on your own. You're not tagging along. Not even for a little while. Afraid so, Taka boy. Let me just grab some paper and I'll draw you a map. After Aria returns, quick preparations were made, and I followed the directions, noted down the map. Surprisingly, it wasn't all that far. However, the hint on how to find my way back in case I got lost was a bit sketchy. Just look down, and you'll see the roof of the dojo from anywhere on the hill. The forest near the dojo was my first challenge to overcome. A narrow path cold along the trees, and nearby was the river Ichikawa's sister had mentioned. I followed Arya's scribbles with a bit of skepticism, but after an hour or so, I finally arrived at the supposedly legendary shrine. The shrine itself seemed surprisingly well maintained, despite being in the middle of nowhere. Made me wonder if someone could be secretly living here. Perhaps some secret martial arts master. The thought of a hermit living and hiding within the shrine in order to prepare himself for an upcoming battle against good and evil started to dwell in my mind. I guess it's too good to be true. I sigh in annoyance at the fact that, aside from the shrine itself, the ground surrounding it seems completely abandoned. There's no way anyone could be living here. For the time being, I decided to focus on the reason behind my visit. I only took a few moments before I gathered the courage to approach the building. Once inside, I found a rather fancy looking altar of sorts at the back of the room. Oh, look at that. I guess this is the thing everyone's talking about. Silently, I folded up the map I had been given. Putting it in inside my bag, I approached the altar. I was kind of skeptical about the whole religious aspect, so I wasn't too sure if it was actually going to work. I don't even think luck will do me much good in a match like this. In my opinion, there wasn't any room for things like luck in martial arts. Judo is all about using the knowledge you have gained through training. 
Of course, a good amount of talent also helps. There was simply no room for something as superstitious as luck. Clearly, this was going to be a match where my expect experience and talent would be pushed to the limits. Nothing more, nothing less. How curious. A boy doesn't believe in superstition. And yet he stands here surrounded by the very thing he denounces. Upon hearing the voice, I looked around, trying to find the source, but there was no one to be seen. Who's there? Quite the cliche question. But the right thing to ask is, where am I? What are you talking about? Show yourself. Not yet. Entertain me for a little while longer, would you? This is a place like no other. Why did you come here? If you did not believe in such a thing as luck. I came here to prepare myself. Oh, do enlighten me about what this something might be that you're preparing yourself for. I felt a little bit annoyed as the questions continued. But maybe if I kept talking to her, I would find out where she was hiding. Typo! Where she was hiding. I'm preparing for a tournament. A judo match. Judo? What might that be? Seriously, you don't even know what judo is? It's highly skilled combat art. Ah, so you're a warrior. Hesitant to go into battle and came here in hope of finding the resolve to fight. Yeah, actually. I'm not so sure about the warrior part. How fortunate. It just so happens that there is a need for one of your kind. My kind? A hero. A shrine brings fortune to heroes such as yourself. However, every great hero must sacrifice something in return. Sounds like what the others mentioned. Your version sounds better, though. Laughing briefly at the story, I decided to play along, clap my hands, and together in prayer. So what's next? Do I offer up my allowance or something? Don't be silly. Money is of little importance to a hero. For you, the sacrifice will be something of much greater value. I will be looking forward to seeing what destiny has in store for you. As if on cue, I began to feel nauseated the moment the girl's words reached my ears. My head spin wild, spinning wildly. Slowly, I staggered backwards, collapsing onto my back. As my vision grew blurry, the sounds of approaching footsteps could be heard. Whoa, yo, good luck, hero. You're going to need it. Fucking demon girl, look at that. God damn. So I think this. I believe this is another. Uh, Western developed visual novel. Um, the soccer games all are, but I don't. But again, I really like the art for reasons that are both obvious and not obvious. Um, she's got a fucking tail, and there's like a chain around her tail, and there's a ribbon at the tip. Man, you've got all the fucking uh, cliches. You got demon horns and pointy ears. Man. Despite my attempts to get back up, all I managed was a brief look at the girl. The sight of horns and a tail left many questions, but before I had a chance to even utter a single word, my consciousness had come to darkness. Rays of sunlight stirred me back to life, a groan of annoyance leaving my mouth while I tried to get back to my feet. I felt a bit dizzy, but the first thing I noticed was that I was no longer at the shrine. Instead, I looked like, instead it looked like the forest near the dojo. Of course, my first thought was to look around to see if I could find the girl from before, but no trace of her presence remained. To make things stranger, the path that I have followed amidst the trees seemed better maintained than I remember. I should probably head home. That thought, cro that thought was cut short when the sound of several female voices could be heard nearby. Get back here! He can't stop them at once! So what do you think you're doing? I'm chasing them. I'm trying to stop them. Yeah, I think they're noticed the. Mi I think they've noticed what's missing. Onesama. I should probably be like making my voice like the thing. Hold on, where's my backlog? Uh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Get back here. Stop them at once. Oh, there's a blue stern voice and a red stern voice. So what do you think I'm doing? Chasing them. I'm trying to stop them. Yeah, I think they've noticed something's missing, Onesama. Keep running, little one. We might just make it. Oh, I get it. That was when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder. The sound of heavy f footfalls could be heard nearby. What in the world is going on here? It's like I stepped into an anime.
Where do they get this music? Is this free rights music? Oh shit, the ninja sounds. Further ahead, I saw a couple of girls. Uh, in Fast Pursuit, and even more girls. However, there was something off for the scene. Something that didn't make sense. The girls being chased had ears and tails of an animal. The pursuers appeared to be armed with katanas and nakitama. Uh, yes. Yes, one has a katana and one has a nakitama. Okay. Um... You conniving fox, get back here at once. Return what you stole immediately. Get me back my panties! Hikage, how could you say something out loud like that? Ha 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 ha, panties, panties! Oh ho, help save us from the rampaging women, hee <laughs> hee. As I watched the girls run off, I couldn't find- I couldn't help but find myself struggling with the decision to just leave them be. While I didn't know what in the world was going on, the two girls armed with rather realistic looking props, surely they couldn't be real, had me worried. I couldn't very well call myself a hero if I let something like this go by without acting. I'm so gonna regret this. I'm like an annoyance, I chased after the girls. Hikage, go around to the left. Right. I said left! Why do you always undermine me? I wasn't tr- I wasn't saying right. I was- You know what, never mind. Just run after them. I was chasing the girls. I noticed that the trees seemed to be getting denser, making it gradually more difficult to navigate along the path. Oh, nice, Sama. I don't think I can run much more. I'm sorry, I need to feel a bit... Ugh. This is a little longer, Miyoko-chan. We're almost... Miyoko! Mi- I gotta say the name right. Miyoko. Miyoko. Not that. Not now. Sorry, Onisama. Scissor attack. I arrived just in time to find a scene st taken straight out of an action movie. The girl with the blonde hair had collapsed, held in her companion's protective embrace. The two armed girls I approached them almost unmistakably with killing instinct running amok. Any seasoned martial artist would have felt it. Those girls were going to be in for a beating if they didn't stop them. We've got you now, thieves. I'm going to personally drag your sorry butts back to town and have you both put on the stocks. Put on the stocks? May I even show you how it feels to run around without any undies on. But you're not wearing any undies? But you got the fucking fishnets on. Yeah, although I must admit, having a breeze down there feels kind of nice. Keeps me feeling fresh and tingly. You all make me... You all make me sad. But yeah, these are the sprites. They're nice sprites. Hikage, goodness, don't you have any shame? This isn't about you, it's about our undergarments. Stolen. These two criminals being brought to justice. Yeah. Oh, sama it hurts. My head hurts. Shh, it's gonna be okay, little one. Hey, guards, if you're so desperate to have your underwear back, then here, catch. Stop it right there. However, before I was able to interrupt the conversation, the silver-haired girl tossed something in the air. Whatever it was, it was flying straight towards my head. The two samurai girls instantly grew frustrated. Ugh, I can't see. Who the hell tosses a... Peeling the item off my face, I raised them in the air, looking like a professor examining an important sample while the thieves made their escape. The pink bra and lacy black panties. Oh boy, I knew this wasn't gonna end well. Ah! You there! Are you in cahoots with those crafty foxes? And hand those back immediately. Those are evidence of a crime and not for anyone else to touch. Drop the panties immediately! I'm innocent until proven guilty. It's one of those golden rules of court. Just stop pointing those weapons at me so I can hand over your undies without being turned into shish kebabs. What? No, stop. Shut up. Just drop the evidence and walk away. I am Tsukinomiya, chief of the village guards, and I'm ordering you to drop what you're holding right now. I don't know if any village guards, and I seriously doubt a cop would go around dressed like that wielding a katana. More importantly, the ground here is muddy and dirty. Are you sure I should drop the evidence here? I mean, I could, but... <laughs> Before I could react, the pink-haired girl lunged towards me and the pointy end of her Nagatama aimed for my gut. 
My reflex was caught on just in time, and I was able to palm away the spear as it sailed through the air, struck upwards to the wooden shafts of the weapon, sinking into the air and causing the girl to lose her balance. Narumi, I did not order you to attack. Fine, fine. I'll give them back. Jeez, just my luck to find a bunch of crazy girls with weapons. Extending the hand that held the undies, I tried to hand them over, something that I would soon end up regretting. Uh, you think I'd fall for something so simple? Fool! You may have fooled me once, but I won't let that happen again. The woman sunk her weapon while arcing the thick wooden pole into my side before I could dodge. She then lunged forward and grabbed me tightly, pulling my arms around behind my back, leaving me with a sore rib and in a prone position. I could have fought back, but I figured it would only lead to more fighting. The possibility of ending up stabbed, I decided to remain passive. The small wooden girl stepped forward and grabbed the silky underwear from my hand triumphantly. Hmm, your methods might be crude, but they do get results, Hikage. Tie him up and we'll bring him in for questioning. He probably knows what the pesky thieves are hiding. Right. And people wonder why criminals want to resist arrest at all times. I mumbled this weakly as the girl with the Nagatama tied my wrist together with a rope, and I soon felt myself dragged by the duel towards the city. Surely, once we're out of the forest, you two will stop this act of yours and let me go, right? As much as I like to fool around, I have more important things to do. The city? Ha, huh. we're not taking you all the way there. You'll be spending the night in the village cells, thief. Who are you calling a thief? I'm the victim first. I get under- First I get undies tossed in my face, then I have to deal with physical abuse, and now this accusation? Besides, there's no village in these parts. It's a city, you know, Tsukino Toshi. Sans, Hikage, if he speaks again before we get to the village, you have permission to knock him unconscious. Suntere tyrant. Hehe, <laughs> that's funny. And that's how I ended up on the way to a jail cell cuffed and dragged by two girls, both who I started to suspect were crazy. When we exited the forest, alarms set off in my mind. The city I had lived in my whole life was gone. You've gotta be kidding me. If I wasn't in Suki no Toshi, where the hell was I? Hey, no talking. Come on, I don't want to bop you that much. Kinda, maybe a punch or two. I just want to know what the heck you blocked. How the heck you blocked my strike so easily? Your attack had a lot of power behind it, but it was kind of predictable. The right move and enough force. That's the result you get. Anyways, I'll play along for a bit. Where in the world are we? This clearly isn't my hometown. I mean, the buildings look more like they belong in some sort of classic samurai movie. Huh? What the heck is a MUVE? This is H Harumaru. It's been here forever. Okay, okay. I thought I told you to sign him if you ever spoke again. Actually, you told me that I could. But you didn't tell me I had to. Must be tough being the subordinate of someone like that. Be quiet or I'll silence you for good. This time it didn't seem to be an idle threat. The girl had unsheathed her katana and was resting the edge of the blade against my throat. I was already starting to regret having played a hero earlier. Hopefully there would be someone more common sense in the village. <laughs> 